would like to um, hand over, first of all, to um, Richard Paris from Sabian Technologies. Um, Richard is the, is the chairman of Sabian. Sec Sabian is a green technology company listed on the AIM. Richard is also a special advisor and founder shareholder with Viva Investment Partners um, since 2018 and runs the Paris Group, his, his family office. As the founder of um, Interseed Group, Richard took the company public in 2001 and was one of the longest serving public company chairman on the London Stock Exchange prior to his exit in 2018. Yesterday you heard Richard talking about the future of trust and the internet today. We place our trust in Richard and his engineering skills to deliver a, a sustainable future with a, a portfolio of CO2 reduction solutions in heating, cooling, and the transportation sector. Richard, please take to the stage here in Mykonos and to the FTE online audience. Thank you, Ray, for that introduction. Pleasure to be back. It seems like only yesterday I was here last time. Uh, th that was a hard act to follow, Mark. Um, I, I think my one takeaway I need to come across, I think, if I understood correctly, more like Elon Musk and less like Bezos and, and Branson. So we'll, we'll uh, take a straw poll on that afterwards. Uh, so I'm privileged, lucky to be the chairman of four different companies, all in the tech space. You heard a little bit about me uh, yesterday when I invited you to join with me to make the world a safer place. But every entrepreneur should have a vision, so we're going to up the vision today. And I'm now going to invite you to join me to save the world. Because I think as we approach COP26, making the world uh, a better place, a cleaner place, and a more sustainable place, absolutely uh, goes to, you know, will humanity have a, have a future? So there couldn't be anything more important uh, to us. Now, my hunting ground for the last 20 years has been the London A market, which I think is a really powerful uh, environment to grow companies in, particularly mid-stage companies. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the London markets, uh, the A market is the, the, the middle market, uh, you've, you've got the, the, the main the standard, the FTSE markets uh, at the top where you have billion dollar companies. You've got Equus, which is a, uh, a much small, smaller, nibbler, uh, more uh, entrepreneurial market at the bottom with very little regulation. And in the middle, you've got AIM, uh, the alternative investment market. Uh, you have all the benefits and access to London institutions and the retail market uh, in the UK, but with the advantage of having uh, light, light regulation. So, for example, we only have to report on AIM every six months rather than every three months as we would do on the main market. Uh, we have less regulation, less, slightly less corporate governance around it, which enables uh, AIM to have companies on which, which really carry a, a little more risk as if the opportunity for, for potentially higher returns. Uh, and it also has the advantage for UK taxpayers that, for example, if you invest in AIM, you don't pay any inheritance tax. So that's, you know, for, so for family officers who want to invest in the London markets, uh, AIM is a great place to be. Now, I became chairman of uh, Sabian uh, uh, about two years ago. Uh, and at that point, we were going to do something completely different with the company. It was, in effect, a shell company. Uh, and inside the shell, there happened to be a green tech company that was doing some really interesting stuff, but was, had, had, had relatively small revenues. Uh, I saw that operating company as a diamond in the rough and I thought we can do a lot with this and actually grow a really interesting green technology uh, business. Uh, but for the first 12 months, we also had a major shareholder that wanted to do a reverse takeover with a business that he had that was in a completely different sector. And I was thinking, do we back the green tech company out and, uh, and, and, and take that on a, a different course? Anyway, the reverse takeover fell over in February this year, and I bought out 
uh, Eddie Trull, who was the previous uh, industrialist who was the investor in the company. So I'm now the largest investor uh, in Saibi, and I put half a million of my own money uh, into the business with a view to build a green technology powerhouse. The company's got relatively small uh, market cap, so we can't go and buy anybody and everybody and go rule the world. So I really have to go back to my entrepreneurial roots to find smart ways to grow assets. So we've been looking for companies that we can acquire. We've been looking for companies with smart, com with smart tech that we can license. And essentially, we want to build an asset base of really relevant, high growth potential, uh, green uh, 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 technology companies that can either play into the, sa the space of saving CO2 production, so heating and cooling are two sort of macro markets for that, uh, as is transportation. And one of the other companies I'm chairman of uh, is Drive Software Systems, who are coming up later in, uh, in this session. Uh, and the team from Drive are going to be talking about things like electric vehicles and the like, which very much play into the, uh, the, the spectrum that uh, Sabian is looking for. Uh, what I thought would be instructive today, though, is uh, just echo a, bit, a little bit of philosophy on what I'm seeing in the green tech space in terms of the companies and the entrepreneurs and the leaders, and then pick out one particular opportunity that, I could, that sitting here the last two days, I believe, can deliver hugely for Greece in, 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 in a very short period of time. So I think there's going to be some real, real resonance here uh, for the audience, and hopefully it will make uh, the, the subject very much uh, come alive. So one thing I'm finding about uh, the green space is there are a lot of really great small companies producing really important, meaningful technologies. They're often uh, entrepreneur owner-led. A lot of these companies are finding it difficult to scale, and in spite of what you might hear about there being millions and billions to invest in green, most of them, because of accidents of history and how they're positioned, are finding it almost impossible to raise money in a way that makes any sort of sense to them. And because they're constrained by scale, they're finding it impossible to break to exploit their local markets, let alone break out into global markets. So at the time when we couldn't be more desperate as a planet for breakthrough technologies, the breakthrough technologies with the technologies at leadership already exists, but it's not finding its way into the wider market and therefore, you know, the, the world as an ecosystem is not benefiting from what these companies could deliver. So I'm seeing there's a real opportunity to position Sabian as, if you will, a, a, an incubator, an asset manager uh, for these companies. We very much want to retain the entrepreneurs and their talents, be that engineers or chemists or physicists, retain those talents in the company, but help them do the things that they struggle to do. We want to give them uh, the respectability of being part of being uh, a listed enterprise. We want to give them the global reach that that will give them. So I, I one of the first things I did when I took control of the company was to open a US office in Texas, for example, because clearly green tech and Texas, that, that's a really important place to be. Uh, so, and, and then we want to give them platforms, we want to give them marketing uh, support. We think a lot of them uh, are, are well suited to play into carbon uh, credits and trading and how can you uh, tokenize the, uh, the savings that you, know, you could make as a consumer by using these technologies which very much takes it into the blockchain space and cryptography and all of that. And you heard me yesterday talking about the insights I have into that world. Uh, and clearly these smaller companies, that, that's just too big an ask for them to go and build their own crypto tokens for carbon trading. So I think we can, we, we can fill that hole. Uh, 
we're not only looking for UK companies, we've been looking internationally. And we f I, f I found a company in Korea, and I've done business in my t previous tech life uh, with Korean companies. And I think they've got a truly world-class, game-changing technology that can make very immediate and real impacts into one of the big problems we have in the circular economy, uh, which is what do we do with all the waste plastic in the world? Because one of the, we, you know, we all know we want to get CO2 down, but a lot of the solutions that are being promoted at the moment require us to go and find new raw materials. So if we're into ha electric cars, we go, need to go find lithium from somewhere, for example. Uh, we need to find better ways to, if you will, do surface mining of all the natural resources we've already dug out, converted into plastic, into oil, into tires, into cars, into batteries, and make that go round in a circle so we don't have to go back to primary extraction, uh, you know, uh, as much as possible. And I'm acutely aware that, and I was sitting here yesterday, if I could offer you, or offer Greece, a technology that would, island by island, completely remove the scourge of plastic in waste, if we could move all that plastic out and turn it into something useful and turn it into energy, that would be a wonderful thing to go and do. And then if we could do that in, in, in you know, on the Greek islands, we can do it everywhere else. I think it's quite nice for me thinking the last couple of days that I can introduce the technology into the UK, but I'll need lots of plants to make a real impact on the UK environment. But if we could introduce some technology that could completely eliminate, for example, uh, plastic pollution in Greece, I think that would be a really great outcome from, from, from this session. So I'm going to play a video. It's, it's about eight minutes long, which I think is too long for this session. So I'm going to probably jump back in after three or four minutes once you've got the, uh, the, the idea. But sometimes when people are talking about new technologies, it's difficult to envision how that would transplant into the real world. So we'll watch the video. And then, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a pitch to this audience, this particular audience. So can we have the, the video, please? As the number of people newly infected with the coronavirus continue to remain high in the country, more people are opting for delivery food. As a result, the amount of waste such as plastic and vinyl has been increasing, causing major environmental problems. In response, a company has secured the technology to produce high-quality liquid fuel oil by treating these plastic and vinyl waste in an environmentally friendly way. Let's explore City Oil Field, a company that is creating new energy for the future. City Oil Field is striving to increase the quality of people's lives by developing technologies essential for both the environment and the energy sector. What it developed is a way to manage plastic and vinyl waste to reduce the amount of garbage in the environment and produce liquid fuel oil. Our Doshi Ujeon is a environmental company. 환경을 살리자라는 취지로 만들어진 기업인데 친환경적으로 폐기물을 처리한가 동시에 오일도 만들어낸다라고 해서 도시에서 만들어내는 쓰고 있는 폐비닐 폐플라스틱으로 기름을 만들어낸다라고 해서 도시에서 만들어내는 기름이라는 뜻을 가지고 도시유전이라는 회사가 설립되게 된 것입니다. City Oil Field uses a wave energy technology that decomposes plastic by heating ceramic balls. As the process is carried out at a low temperature environment below 300 degrees Celsius, harmful substances are not generated during the process. The amount of garbage can be reduced by 90% as well. The principal ceramic ball is 300 degrees Celsius. 파동 에너지가 발생하고 
플라스틱 제조 과정에서 결합된 탄소 분자고리를 끊어내서 원래 모습인 기름으로 변환이 된 것입니다. 이제 가장 중요한 것은 열이 아닌 파장을 이용해서 폐플라스틱을 분해 처리하기 때문에 전체 처리 과정에서 유해물질이나 냄새, 연기, 가스 등을 거의 발생시키지 않고 처리되는 친환경적인 기술이라는 점입니다. The company possesses a special facility that allows the employees to inject waste plastic materials and vinyl products without a separate assortment process. After the materials are decomposed, it goes through multiple refining stages before being made into liquid fuel oil that can immediately be applied at industrial sites. 도시 유전 기술의 최대 장점은 폐기물 투입 시 선별이나 세척 등 별도의 전처리 과정이 불필요하다는 점입니다. 도시 유전의 기술을 적용한다면 이런 번거로움이나 불편함 없이 버려진 플라스틱과 비닐을 효과적으로 처리할 수 있다는 겁니다. 또한 그동안 재활용하지 못하고 종량제 봉투에 넣어서 버렸던 것들을 처리함으로써 환경 보호에 이바지한다는 점입니다. Conventionally, the production of liquid fuel oil from waste was generated from a pyrolysis process. However, various harmful substances generated through the pyrolysis process caused another environmental pollution problem. That's why City Oilfield's method of using wave energy to treat waste is gaining more attention. 기름을 뽑고 남은 잔재는 탄화, 즉 숙과 같은 성분으로 되어 있기 때문에 알루미늄, 비철, 중금속 그리고 So I think, I think that gives you the general picture. It's a clean process, it's low temperature, it's not incineration, it doesn't put, put pollutants into the atmosphere. The plastic waste can come in mixed. It can be mixed with other domestic garbage. The system doesn't, doesn't care. Uh, if you do put pure plastic in, if you put five tons of plastic in, you get 85% by weight of that out as fuel oil. That's clean enough to go straight into a car engine or a diesel engine or, or a boat. Uh, so this is, this is sort of the strength of what I'm wanting Sabian to do as a company because perfectly fine business in Korea about to go into production in 2022 on a number of uh, municipal waste uh, sites in Korea. But there are Korean company that haven't had the, the reach, the knowledge, the wherewithal to, to expand or market or tell the story uh, in the rest of the world. And using the power of Sabian's public company status, uh, I pitched to, uh, to the Korean management team uh, and, and the owners that Sabian could take their, their technology around the world uh, and that we are now currently looking for uh, operators and sites to uh, build the first sites outside of Korea. Uh, Sabian doesn't in its, itself want to be an operating company and Sabian doesn't want to be a, a prop co and own the land where the recycling plant is. Uh, you know, the, the, the old story, what do you call a technology company with property? You know, a property company. Uh, so I'm looking for industrial partners. I'm looking for companies and countries and municipal areas that have got uh, space for a reprocessing site, who have a hunger to be sustainable, who have a plastic pollution problem that they would like to solve and have outlets for the uh, oil that is produced as, as a, a, an outcome of the, the project. And as I, as I said earlier, this just looks like, a, to my somewhat naive eyes, as being relatively new to Greece, a technology that could be parked, you know, on several Greek islands that could completely take the, uh, the, the garbage feeds from those islands and turn it into something useful and get rid of the pollution problem that's in all our oceans and in the Mediterranean and in these waters more than many other places in the world. 
So that's the end of my pitch today. I'll take questions. Thank you. Richard, thank you very much indeed for those super insightful um, ideas and for those strategic thoughts. Um, a quick question from me and then I'll hand over to the audience. I think uh, we've agreed, Richard, that speed is of the essence in delivering yeah. some of these technologies. How, how can you, the companies that you're working with and your ideas deliver that speed to deliver the net zero solutions? Well, the we fact, I'm, for example, I'm, I'm pitching City Hall today. If I wasn't doing this, I'm sure in the fullness of time they'd be successful and it would be another year or two or more before they be communicating their message to other markets. So, you know, I'm offering Greece the opportunity here, for example, today, you know, to be in the game with this technology at least 18 months quicker than if, we, if Sabin didn't exist as a company. Very good. Well, I, I would like to ask you a few more questions, but I can see a whole bunch of hands. So, uh, could, I, could I take a question from you there, please? Uh, th thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Malcolm Russ. I live on a small island in the Mediterranean as well. Um, so it occurs to me, you know, what is the minimum size of the, one of these plants? Uh, what's the capex, um, you know, the usual numbers? Uh, so the reactor, or they call it the reactor, the big silver thing you, you, you saw on the video there, that will process six tons, metric tons at a time, and it takes about 23 hours to process one batch. Uh, and it, th there is a, an oil, there's a secondary process also driven by some of the same technology that sits behind that reactor, uh, and you'll see it on the video if you watch more of the video, that does the secondary uh, refinement. Uh, and one of those reactors will process four of the primary reactors. You're probably talking about three million for, per reactor. You're probably talking about a plant, depending on civil engineering requirement. If you had four reactors in one plant, it's probably a 20 to 30 million uh, dollar investment. Uh, and the calculations we've looked at shows a, uh, an RRI period of around five years, which I think is pretty good. Now that will change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction because uh, in some countries you get a benefit of the gate fee when the waste is delivered and that's variable and the value of the product that you produce uh, changes as well. So at the moment biodiesel is in great demand by the oil companies to mix with their primary uh, products so that they can make, meet government deadlines uh, and targets for making their regular products greener. So, depending where you are in the world and how the incentives work for uh, making regular fuel greener, uh, you know, the, the price point of the, the, the product is different. But we, th we think 20 to 30 million, and we think five year payback, give or take, which I think is hugely attractive. So, I'm going to say the, a question from the man in the blue shirt at the back, but everyone's wearing blue shirts at the back. It's clearly <laughs> the FTE uniform for the afternoon. This, this chap on the table here, please. I'm not so good with names as Julie, so uh, thank you very much. Hi, uh, Simon Carlton, Carlton James. Um, I just want to talk more about Sabian quickly, if that's okay. Please. Uh, so, y you're looking to um, acquire tech, acquire companies. Have you, uh, how much tech or companies have you acquired so far? Uh, as a Sabian, the group. We're public. We haven't announced any acquisitions today. No acquisitions as of yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. A any more before I hand over to our next speaker? Any? Any? Uh, the lady uh, in the uh, black at the front here, please. Thank you very much. Sounds an amazing solution. Um, could you see this working in Africa as well? Because I have some contacts there that would very, very happy to have that opportunity of getting waste out of this. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the great advantage of this tech is the nearer you can get it to the point of, pr of the problem. So, you know, you don't want to be shipping waste over vast distances to put onto ships to take around the world to be processed. You know, if you can have a community that's big enough to support, you know, one, two, three of these reactors and it sorts the local problem. Abs absolutely. It's well, well, it makes sense because you're saying we could use the same fuel for the domestic use, so I think it's kind of a win-win situation if they're able to do that. I believe so. I uh, believe but so. Uh, and the other question is, how big a space would one require to actually achieve that? Uh, I mean, to, to actually have the plant in place. 
the plant. You, uh, the, you mean how, do, how big does the how plant? How big should a plant area be? Yes. I, I, I've got some numbers on that. I can provide that uh, uh, after the fact. Yeah. yeah thank you, you. You can get an idea. You know, sort of ten ten meters by ten meters, which is probably sufficient for the plant you've seen on the uh, yeah, on the screen here. So okay. it's, it's not not lo not it's large. Not very big. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave that one for now. And Richard, thanks so much indeed for all thanks those everyone. excellent insights.